Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of my die sets. This is die number 1033, the Castle Pop-Up, and you can check out all of my designs at KarenBerniston.com. Now there are accessory dies that work wonderfully with the castle, like the word set that I'll use for the greetings on this card, but you really can make quite an impressive card with just the pieces that come in the set. There are 14 individual dies that come in this set. I've placed them on a magnet sheet, and I'll start first by making my pop-up card base. You always choose your own card size with my dies, and for today's castle, I'm going to make an A2 long. So that means this red cardstock is four and a quarter by 11, and then scored in the middle for folding. Since I decided on a single piece outer backing card, then I need my inner pop-up card to be cut into two pieces. For my card today, I chose three and three quarters by four inches on the size of each of those pieces. And then what I'll do is I'll use the card as a guide to place them close to the fold and use temporary tape to hold those two pieces of paper to each other. Then I'll tape in the pop-up die. Okay, let's take a little freeze here. That pop-up die has alignment nubs that should go right over the fold of the card. So you can see those are right over that red fold. And then there's a little triangle cutout that looks like an arrow in the middle of the die, and that should point towards the front of the card. So if you have chosen a piece of pattern paper that has a direction to it, you would want to make sure that you align your pop-up die correctly. I removed the red card because I only want to cut the pop-up into the pattern paper. And you can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. I'm using a Sizzix Big Shot today. I'll remove the die. And now you can see, I'm going to leave those two pieces of paper taped together until I get them into my card. But you can see what the pop-up die does. It creates the little drawbridge that actually comes through and folds the other way. And then it's got the two tabs that will align with the castle. Now I can put those pieces of paper inside my card permanently. Now I'm just using a tape runner, but you could use whatever adhesive you prefer. And then I only want to put the adhesive all over the parts of the paper where the holes aren't. In other words, I've got to avoid those two areas where the pop-up is. And now I can remove that temporary tape that was holding my two pieces of pattern paper together. I'll set that aside and work on the castle. Now I'll need the big castle die as well as the tower, the open tower that has that tab attached to the bottom. So I'll arrange my castle die and my tower on my cardstock so I can cut those at the same time. And then I'll run back through with just the tower piece because I need two of those. Back to my card for a second, I noticed that the inside of that drawbridge that you will see in the finished card is actually a pattern from the back of the paper that isn't going to work with the colors of my card. So I will take my pop-up die and my leftover piece of the same pattern paper and just trim out the drawbridge area and glue that to the inside of that drawbridge and then that's going to solve that problem. Now this is completely optional. I just decided to do it because I already had the perfect tab here from the pop-up cut I made for the drawbridge so I could go in and put that little tab right into that red area of the floor so that it is the same pattern paper all along the floor of the castle and you don't see the holes from where the pop-up came up. And then I just hand cut a piece that would fit into that little opening for the other floor area. That's just a good trick to know in case you have used pattern paper for your outer backing card and perhaps the pattern that's showing in the floor isn't something that you like, then you can just go ahead and patch it. Okay, back to our castle assembly. The towers that have the little foot at the bottom, you'd want to fold up on those tabs on both of the towers. And then the idea is that these will glue back to back and then they'll be sitting on two little feet at the bottom. Now again, adhesive is completely up to you. I'm just using a tape runner for this. And then I just want to line those up and get them pressed to each other. And then now they'll sit in over the fold of the card on those two feet. Now I'll work all the folds in the castle piece as mountain folds, which means I'm folding away from myself. There's one that goes all the way up the front of the castle to the top. And I usually start with that one. And then there's a, another one on the other side of the drawbridge tower. And again, those are mountain folds, so they fold to the back. 
So I will continue to find the other four folds. So there's one about midway down. Usually I will just stick my thumbnail into the score line and fold towards my thumb first and then just immediately reverse it. So there's two on that side and then there should be two on the other side. So again, just find the score line, fold towards yourself and then immediately away the other way. The last score line will be right up the middle of this tower all the way up through the triangle shaped roof. And again, if you're going to start with a valley fold, which is easier than just reverse it afterwards to be a mountain. Now I want to do all my decorating first, but later on that tab is going to attach in the back and it'll be a six sided castle. And what I want to point out is that when you're viewing it from the front of the card, you really see these three sides and these three sides. So as you're decorating, just know which side is going to be visible in the finished card. The towers and the stone walls have a stencil emboss feature built into the die so that if you run your pieces back through with an embossing sandwich, you'll get that raised texture of either stone or brick, or you can use it as a stencil. Now you can kind of cheat and just double up your cardstock when you're cutting them, and then that usually will give you that emboss. It won't be quite as defined as with an embossing sandwich, but it will give you that texture. And just know that this tall brick tower is actually used twice. You use it on your standalone tower, but then it's also sized to fit this tower, and that one you would just end up cutting it down. Let me switch to glue, and we do sell both the glue and the bottle on our website. And I'll start by adding the decorator piece that fits the drawbridge tower. And that one's really easy. You just line up the holes, and it will leave that little shadow all the way around the piece. The stone wall pieces leave that shadow top and bottom, but they pretty much go fold line to fold line on the width of them. And I'll just add the two that are next to the drawbridge tower. The decorator roof triangle has a score line in it so that you can fold it to match the one that's in the castle itself. And once again, just leave that little shadow. On the decorator pieces that do around the windows, they also have been scored to fold up the middle so that they'll match the fold that's in the castle. And what's nice about those window openings is they also leave a shadow so that you see the shadow on the interior of the window when you put those pieces on. So that completes the decoration for the front on those three panels. Then what I'd do is turn that piece around and put my decorations on the other side for the next three. So I'll start with a piece of stone wall, just lining it up between the fold lines. And then I've got another stone wall for the other side, but before I do that, I need to get my tower piece on. So I just need to cut off some from the bottom. It doesn't really matter where or if it's particularly straight because that stone wall is going to cover the bottom edge of that tower decoration, but it just needs to go on first so that the stone wall can cover it. The triangle roof piece can go on and the piece around the windows. Now those two, since they're on the back side of the castle, will actually become valley folds in the finished card. And when this gets glued together, you can see that it now all has decorations that are viewable from the front of the card. Now that my decorating is done, I can add glue to the tab and attach it to the other side. So my castle is ready for the card. Let me just get my extra tower ready by adding the decorator piece to that. And then there's also a piece to decorate the drawbridge itself. So that's a piece that's a little bit smaller than the drawbridge and will leave a little shadow when you glue it in there and line up the holes. Now I'll add glue to the front of that pop-up tab and then just get in there and line it up behind the drawbridge opening. There's holes that will also line up with the holes, so placement's really easy. It just glues in there inside the castle. And then on the back side, you put the glue on this side of the tab so that it too can glue up inside the castle, and that way it's hidden inside the castle. That is all there is to putting it inside a card. You can see it will now pop down and pop up. Now you see the inside of that tab in the in the castle. That's why I kept the last decorator piece, which is the short stone wall, until the very end. And that way I can glue it inside the castle and it will cover my tab. And there you go. One cool castle. 
Now there is that extra tower, it's optional, but I do think it adds a little fun and pizzazz to the castle. You would just want glue all over the two feet. That can go anywhere along the fold. My favorite thing is to place it all the way to the right side of the castle, but you have to do that in the open position so that you make sure you don't put it too far out or else then the castle can't open all the way. So it's best to place that by doing it with the card open and then just pushing it into the fold while you close it and let that glue set up. The die set includes two identical flag dies and those look great attached to the top of the pointy roofs. And then there are two cloud dies in the set and those are also optional but they look great attached to the castle as well. Kind of really gives it that feeling of being a very tall castle with its towers up in the clouds. I'll put glue on the end of a piece of baker's twine and just twist it in my fingers to make a solid end that's easier to string through the holes of the castle. My favorite way to string up the drawbridge is to go through from the front of the tower and then back out the other side and then take both those ends through the drawbridge itself. So then I just cut off the excess so that the ends will be up underneath the drawbridge, add a glue dot to the underside, and then when I press that down against the card it will trap the ends of the twine. My favorite way to make the fronts of cards is just to take my leftover materials and do a simple lead-in with similar colors and styling. And what's great about the castle pop-up die is that it also makes flat castles. So I can just use those pieces flat to decorate the front of the card to have another castle with some clouds and that will just look perfect as a lead-in to the pop-up. And then all I need is a tape runner to attach that to the front of the card. There's a fun word set in this collection that goes great with the castle, and that is Word Set 5 Royalty. It does have its own video tutorial if you want to see how you nest in the different phrases to be able to make them as knockouts inside that banner. And what I've decided to do is make the greeting for this card be, it's good to be king for a day. And I included that phrase in that die set specifically because it is such a good generic guy phrase. You can say it's good to be king for a day when you're wishing a man happy birthday, but also Valentine's, anniversary, congratulations, graduation, Father's Day. You know, there's lots of ways to use that phrase for those guy cards. There are other dies in the collection that work great with the castle, including the knight and dragon. You're also seeing the cake trims used on this one to add a moat around the castle. So lots of ways to combine the dice in this release to make really fun cards. And I can just mail that finished card in an A2 envelope. It's just a standard size card. So now let me show you a few ideas by our incredibly talented design team. Helen Cryer added the new princess and the same word set and made a princess for a day castle and I am absolutely smitten with it. And this card by Kelly Booth using the knight and the dragon. And notice that her drawbridge is just suspended midway. I love that look. It will make fantastic sand castles, as you see by this card by Frances Byrne. And she added the mermaid and the tropical scene. Fran Sabad also made a sand castle card that incorporates the tropical scene. And then she used her cute stamps as embellishments. I love the Victorian elegance of this Queen for a Day card by Shelley Hickox, and I especially love how she added ivy climbing up the sides of the castle. And then Fran Sabad made these matching boy and girl castle gift boxes and matching tags. The castle pop-up will start shipping in February 2018. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.